Pay attention to this sign as it precedes a heart attack. Did you know there are signs that can warn of an impending heart attack? But I want to highlight one particular sign for you to know. Everyone watching needs to understand this sign as it warns of an approaching heart attack. I'll discuss seven heart attack signs, prevention, and key tests to avoid cardiac issues. I'll share important values for you to learn as well. Then I'll explain a specific sign that suggests heart trouble and an impending attack. So pay close attention to all parts of this video as they're crucial. What are the seven signs that may indicate a heart attack, a cardiac emergency? We know that in many countries, heart disease is the leading cause of death including heart attacks and cardiovascular issues. So it's crucial to understand these signs and symptoms to seek medical help promptly. Remember, if you experience these symptoms, don't schedule an appointment. It might take too long. If you're feeling these symptoms, it could be a heart attack and you need to get emergency medical care ASAP. Got it? So what are these signs and symptoms? First, chest pain. But this chest pain can also feel like tightness, burning, or even discomfort in the upper stomach. It's hard to describe the pain precisely as it can vary depending on the person having a heart attack. So watch for chest heaviness, pressure, or a burning sensation. Why? What happens when the heart starts to have an attack? Blood flow is cut off to a part of the heart. This can cause that sensation. So chest pain. The second key sign is a change causing numbness or altered sensitivity. A numb arm, especially the left one. But this can also occur in the jaw. So left arm or jaw numbness suggests heart trouble. Each sign and symptom increases the likelihood. Even one sign, like chest pain, is a big red flag. As more signs appear, the chances go up too. And sign number three, nausea, vomiting. In ER, many heart attack patients came in nauseated, ready to vomit. Why? It can affect the vagus nerve, causing nausea. Often they'd vomit. I had severe nausea and felt like vomiting during the ER visit. So yes, it's a sign that should be taken seriously. Sign number four is dizziness feeling like you might faint. Since heart function is often compromised, affecting blood flow and oxygen to tissues and brain, if it can't do this properly, it can cause that dizzy sensation. Sign number five is cold sweat, paleness, and clammy skin. Have you ever experienced this? When the heart's struggling, our body may release hormones causing these symptoms. Cold sweat means clammy skin. You feel off, or if you've seen someone having a heart attack, they might feel cold to the touch and be sweating. These could be signs of heart trouble. The sixth sign is a feeling of anxiety. This is also commonly reported by people experiencing a heart attack. After all, chest pain, nausea, cold skin, and sweating can all contribute to feeling anxious. And the seventh sign is shortness of breath, difficulty breathing in. It can also affect overall respiration. Now that you know the main signs of a heart attack, it's crucial to understand which tests should be normal to lower your risk. It's important to monitor this, not just recognize the signs. I'll also tell you about a key indicator to watch for as it could determine your survival chances. If you're aware, you can seek help while there's still time to prevent it. All right, let's discuss the exams in the second part of the video. I've outlined seven key points to cover with you. What's the first exam? The primary risk factor you should watch to prevent a heart attack? The first is diabetes, specifically blood sugar levels. I'll show a table to explain this more clearly. I want to highlight two points in particular. The first is fasting blood glucose. Ideally, this test result should be below 100. I've included values in MMOL-L on the side too. Many countries use this measure, so you can reference it, okay? Fasting blood glucose value. This test is crucial, as you don't need diabetes to increase heart attack risk. Even pre-diabetic levels around 110 mgdl can raise your heart attack risk. Did you know that? Many people think, I don't have diabetes, so my risk is low. But that's not true. You need to check your fasting glucose and glycated hemoglobin tests. High glycated hemoglobin levels greatly increase your risk of a heart attack. It's one of the main risk factors. In fact, it might be the most important one. Think about that. Another major risk factor is high blood pressure. I'll show you the values to make it clearer and I'll explain as you look at them. Why? What's the problem with high blood pressure? 
When the heart works with higher blood pressure, what happens? Blood vessels can get damaged. The same occurs with high blood sugar levels. So we've already identified two factors here. What's considered a good blood pressure? Ideally, it's 120 over 80. New guidelines are setting lower blood pressure values, okay? Before, 135 was the limit. Now it's 130. Many protocols now consider this increased pressure, got it? So I'll suggest 120 over 80 here. For fall risk patients, it may be slightly higher, but that's case by case. 120 80 is good, but American and European societies differ slightly. No global consensus yet, just so you know. But do check your blood pressure at least monthly. If you're adjusting treatment or in diagnosis, doctors need to know. Check your blood pressure three times weekly at different times. Always note the value and heart rate. The heart rate is shown on the blood pressure device. It's crucial for choosing medications if needed. Why do I suggest this monitoring? Often people experience what we call white coat hypertension at the doctor's office. Have you heard of it? Many think I'm joking, but it's a serious matter. What is white coat hypertension? It's when blood pressure spikes at the doctor's office due to stress. Even if you seem calm, the doctor might prescribe meds, but since it's normally fine, you could face side effects or fainting. There's also masked hypertension. What's that? When BP is high at home but normal at the doctor's because you're relaxed there, the doctor thinks you're fine, unaware of your high BP at home. This also has consequences. That's why I always recommend monitoring outside the doctor's office. Do you experience any of these situations? Why well, is very common, especially white coat hypertension? Write it here and mention your city too. I'm in Porto Alegre, as you know. It's very common here. The third risk factor often overlooked is body inflammation tests. One risk factor is obesity. Many don't know fat tissue can produce inflammatory factors. We can assess this through blood tests. Did you know? Q-reactive protein can indicate heart attack risk. I'll note the C-reactive protein values here. If it's over three, it suggests high cardiac risk. So this needs to be considered too. Another test is for uric acid levels. Uric acid can also indicate inflammation and increase heart disease risk. Keep that in mind. Uric acid is often overlooked. Many think it's just about gout and joint pain, but it's also a cardiovascular risk factor. Did you know that? If not, that like was worth it, right? If you're not subscribed, I invite you to subscribe and keep up with new videos. Also, hit the notification bell and select all options. That way, YouTube will notify you when I post. The fourth exam, fourth risk factor, is crucial. Pay attention to this one, cholesterol. Many people ask, but isn't cholesterol bad? Actually, cholesterol is great. It's very good. Excess cholesterol, especially bad cholesterol, is a major risk factor for heart attacks. So what are these values? For bad cholesterol LDL, I'll show a table. It varies based on individual risk factors. Consider an athlete with no diabetes, high blood pressure, smoking history, or heart disease. For them, an LDL of 130 would be good. But for someone at higher risk, that could be extremely high. Like someone who's had a heart attack, has high blood pressure, or diabetes. 130 is very high for them. We need to assess each person's risk to handle it individually. Another point to highlight is good cholesterol called HDL. For this one, the higher the better, right? Because it cleans out the arteries. So what should that value be? Ideally above 40, okay? The ideal value is even higher, as shown in the table here. Another often overlooked test like uric acid is triglycerides. It's another fat type that increases heart attack risk. This should preferably be below 150. So Cholesterol is crucial. How's your cholesterol uh, and your triglycerides? Let's move on to number five, the thyroid exam. Did you know an unbalanced thyroid can greatly increase your heart attack risk? As an endocrinologist, I often see thyroid issues overlooked. Everyone talks about diabetes, cholesterol, and high blood pressure, but thyroid disease can cause changes in pressure blood vessels, and overall regulation, it's often ignored or not even evaluated. I'll include reference values here. This evaluation is crucial because thyroid changes can raise blood pressure and harden arteries, both risk factors for heart problems. So don't forget to check your thyroid.
What if I have a thyroid issue, like hypothyroidism? Am I at risk? If you're treating it and your levels are normal, you're not at risk, okay? However, if your levels are off, you need to address that because it can harm your heart, got it? So it's not just any thyroid problem, but untreated or ineffectively treated thyroid issues, understood? Another risk factor, which you probably know, is a sedentary lifestyle. I won't dwell on this too much. You should do at least 150 minutes of physical activity per week, split into three or more sessions, all right? It can be running, walking, gym workouts, or swimming. Regular physical activity reduces your risk of having a heart attack. Some studies suggest over 250 minutes of exercise weekly spread across three or more days. But I'd recommend starting with at least 150 minutes, like 30 minutes, five times a week. I know it's tough, but if you can exercise, it'll greatly benefit your heart and control other risk factors. Number seven is smoking. This includes cigarettes, roll-ups, and e-cigs. Just don't smoke, period. There are factors we can't change, like age and genetics. The older you are, the higher your heart attack risk. We can't modify genetics yet. Now, what's the key sign I want you to focus on? It's the main point of this video. Remember I mentioned a sign that often indicates a heart attack in progress, a sign of restricted blood flow? That sign is angina. What's that? It's chest pain that occurs after or during physical activity. For instance, climbing stairs might trigger it as your heart works harder. So pain during exercise is a major red flag. Angina pain eases with rest, which often delays doctor visits. Why? The pain stops when you rest, so you think it must be gone. But no, it's actually a serious warning sign. Chest pain during exercise that eases with rest is a major red flag. On a scale of 0, 10, how would you rate this video? If it's a 10, I'll make more like it. Have you experienced this symptom or let me know in the comments. If you've had a heart attack, share your story. It helps others. Now, I've got a video suggestion for you. It's about salads for diabetics. Did you know some veggies can spike blood sugar in diabetics? This is a common mistake for diabetics. You should know which veggies are best and worst. I'll leave the link here. Click it to learn more about diabetes and vegetables. Take care. See you next time.